You're watching College Football Now. I am Harrison Graham. He is James Yoder. We're going to take some of your questions on today's show and perhaps dive into a little bit of recruiting as well. Let's start with Carson Bennett here asking, what teams can make a big jump on signing day? A few days away from National Signing Day uh, here, James, and yep. uh, there's still a lot of top recruits that remain unsigned. Yeah, coming up uh, in eight days from now, next Wednesday is National Signing Day, the early National Signing Day, which I find a little odd because it's in the middle of Conference Championship <laughs> Week. I think they should have adjusted that a little bit, but nevertheless, so I think it might be a good time here, so we can take a look who are the top 10 uncommitted prospects. I think when you see who we predict where these prospects go, it will help us understand who is a chance to get a big time signing day splash uh, coming up here on the early signing period on December 16th. Appreciate your question, Carson. So let's take a look at some of these top prospects. Corey, Corey Foreman, excuse me, the number one available recruit, the defensive end. Where do you where do you see him potentially landing on signing? Look, people have compared him. 24-7 Sports compared him to a Cameron Jordan of the Saints, also a California guy. Ironically, he's from Corona, California. Shout out that 2020 uh, prospect. I think he's going to end up at USC. <laughs> he has flirted with a lot of schools, Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson. Ultimately, it sounds like he's going to end up at his hometown, USC. Trojans uh, uh, when it comes down to signing day coming up next Wednesday. And by the way, a lot of these guys, this isn't the, the final signing day. So if some of these prospects we'll talk about aren't the, uh, you know, if, if they're not enrolling early, they don't have to technically sign until February, yeah, but most will sign coming up next Wednesday. But I ask you guys this question. I think USC, you guys predict in the comments, your 2021 top recruit in the country, Corey Foreman, where will he sign coming up here on National Signing Day, December 16th, next Wednesday? Our next top recruit that remains unsigned, JT Tuimalau, the defensive end as well, the number three overall recruit. Where? Tell me a little bit about him. Where does he end up landing? Yeah, so it's kind of funny. Ohio, or the, the state of Washington has two of the top seven or eight prospects in the country, which is actually very rare. they got a five-star defensive end here. They've also got a five-star wide receiver. But he has been looking around uh, a lot. He's been talking about Ohio State. He's been talking about USC. He's been talking to a bunch of other schools. Comparison is Cameron Hayward of the Steelers from Ohio State. But if you're a defensive end right now with the Bosa brothers and with Chase Young, why would you not go to Ohio State? And ultimately, that's where I've got him projected. He's going to be Ohio State's, I think, sixth five-star uh, recruit in this 2021 class. We'll go a little quicker pace on some of these guys as we get further down the list. Emeka Ibuka the wide receiver, top 10 player in the country. Yeah, the comp, the comp for him is actually Juju Smith-Suster of the okay. Steelers, a USC player. I thought this was going to be Ohio State. I thought they were going to absolutely have the most ridiculous class to start the season. Looked or to, like they were for their a work. while. I thought he was Ohio State. Seems to me he went to Oklahoma this past weekend, was thrown around with their five-star quarterback, Williams. Caleb Williams. Yep. It sounds like he's going to end up at Oklahoma sooner. Yeah, Lincoln Riley making a late push for this class, perhaps. We'll see if he can get a couple of these guys down the stretch before we get through our next couple of players if you want more college football coverage this is the place for you subscribe to chat sports national signing day is just around the corner and we will have the latest news and rumors around that also college football hot boards coaches are getting let go left and right if they get fired we will have a lit video on most of those teams so go ahead subscribe and yes we'll continue to break down the college football playoff rankings as well tristan lee is next up here number 11 overall player the offensive tackle and I think this is a situation where all of a sudden it's all coming together. You got Caleb Williams out of the, the Washington, D.C. area. Fairfax, not too far away. He's from Fairfax, Virginia. His offensive tackle, I think he's going to go to Oklahoma is where I'm projecting him. So Buka and Lee heading to Oklahoma, according to James Yoder. We will see what these kids do on National Signing Day. We'll pick it up here. Terrence Lewis, the number 16 player, the linebacker. Yeah, I mean, I've got him. I mean, it's really interesting to see. I don't know if I understand where he's going to go. He de decommitted from Tennessee about a week ago. He had been committed to them for a while. Visited Auburn two weekends ago. Decommitted right after that. So I think the writing on the wall for him, he's going to end up with the Auburn Tigers. Auburn Tigers, those are your top five uncommitted recruits. we got five more players to break down here on college football now. Mason Smith, yes, that's spelled correctly. Two A's on his name. A defensive <laughs> tackle out of Louisiana. Uh, I got word in my ear, LSU. LSU insider Carter Bryant has him pegged to the LSU Tigers and Coach O. So I think that's where he's going to end up being an LSU Tiger when all is said and done. Makes sense. Coach O needs to get things back on track. Xavier Sori next up here, the linebacker. Yeah, I mean, a very, very fast player from what I've been told. I watched a little bit of his film. I've got him going to Alabama. People say Kiko Alonso or Devin Bush as his comparison Ooh, okay. of what he projects to in college. So he's going to go to Alabama. 
probably the best linebacker school in the country over the past decade or so. Yeah, no doubt about that. Nick Saban's always got linebackers. Kamar Wheaton, a running back out of Garland, Texas. Another player. You're going to see a theme here, right? They got the best quarterback in the country, uh, Caleb Williams. You saw the best receiver in the country, one of the best few tackles. I've got him going to Oklahoma, heading north. He's from Dallas area in Texas. He's going to head north, go to the Oklahoma Sooners. Something tells me Lincoln Riley ain't going anywhere. He's got a big class potentially coming in here. Number nine here, uh, Shamar Turner, another defensive end here. Yeah, I mean, I don't really, I haven't followed his recruiting a ton, but from everything I've read and everything I've seen and been told, he's been texting him all the way. We'll see what happens, but he is a 6'4", 290-pound player. Defensive end in high school, a lot of people project him to move inside a defensive tackle once he gets to college. A shift in this state the past couple of years, Jimbo Fisher out-recruiting Tom Herman. Next up here, Tumiche Adelele. That is how you pronounce his name. Another defensive end, lots of defensive ends who got to make decisions soon. A lot of big guys, a lot of, lot of tough to pronounce names in this top yes. 10 uncommitted recruits. So shout out to Harrison for, uh, for getting those pronunciations down. He moved his announcement back. Now, a lot of people have him leaving the Dallas, you know, the, the, the Texas area, going out of state to Alabama. But he was supposed to make a decision on signing day, moved it back. He won't decide till the Saturday okay. after signing day, December 19th. I've still got him plugged at Alabama, but we will see. Switching your uh, your announcement to December 19th, four or five days after signing day. Maybe you want to add a little more information. Maybe you want to see where other prospects are going. Another player in your position goes to Alabama. Maybe he goes somewhere else. Or maybe it's 2020 and these kids want their own day to make a decision. Very because true. that's the social media era we live in. We got college football face masks on sale. Chatsports.com slash CFB masks. We got solo packs all the way up to three packs. You can get these neck ones starting to get cold, so that would be a good option for you guys. These three packs look great as well. Those are the best bang for your buck, by the way, the three packs. That's how you're going to maximize it's your value It's such a there. good deal to go buy these things, and I'll tell you what, if you have a sports fan in your life, just go use them. Go buy a couple packs. Do them with a stocking stuffer for yep. a friend, a boss, a co-worker, whoever is, a dad. It's better than a tie, that's for sure. So go to chatsports.com slash CFB masks. Before we sign off on tonight's live show, the third edition of the College Football Playoff Rankings released. If you're just joining us, let's go ahead and hit the top six one more time. Alabama holds firm. Notre Dame, Clemson, Ohio State, Texas A&M, and Florida. Those are your top six. Real quick, in 30 seconds or so, anything stand out to you either right now or moving forward? Well, it'll be interesting to me because I think all in, what Ohio, all four of these top four teams is – I don't think anybody wants to play Alabama, which is clear. I think everybody wants to play Notre Dame, right? Yes. And so if Notre Dame loses to Clemson, like there's just going to be a lot of positioning and politicking inside the committee and potentially outside the committee. If that Notre Dame game against Clemson, if they lose close, is there a chance they keep Notre Dame at three over undefeated Ohio State, make Ohio State face Alabama in a one versus four. Also think about this. Could Alabama lose to Florida? Florida jumps in. Then who's number one? Is it Notre Dame? Is it Ohio State? It's really going to be fun to see. I think Ohio State fans are still very bitter about last year, knocking the number one seed. LSU got that. They had to face Clemson, kept them out of the national title game versus getting the, you know, getting the Oklahoma you know, throw-in game. The only problem with that scenario is, do you want Clemson-Notre Dame part three? Because that's what happens in that scenario, and I think the committee would probably try to avoid that. Even though but... they say they won't, but of course they would yeah. in that scenario, absolutely. The rest of your top ten, Cincinnati, Iowa State, uh, Georgia, and the Miami Hurricanes. Iowa State's going to try and win their first conference title in about 100 years. Let's fix that, by the way. Iowa State was number seven. Uh, Cincinnati was eight. Those were our projected ah, rankings got, from got, got. earlier for seven through ten. Iowa State 7, Cincinnati 8 ah, uh, on okay. that one. So uh, uh, 11 through 15 here, Oklahoma, Indiana, Coastal Carolina, Northwestern, and USC. And uh, we've agreed the Pac-12 just does not have a path Coastal here. Carolina, Myrtle Beach is finest, baby. Put since have how about this Cincinnati and Coastal in one of the uh, in one of the New Year's Six? Who says no? It's yeah, 2020. I would. This is why I need to call for a college football commissioner because things like the BYU Coastal Carolina game, Texas A&M Ohio State, it's great would for happen. Football. Have someone who just says that would be awesome. Let's do it. I like your idea, Coastal Carolina, Cincinnati. Just make it happen in a bowl game. Let's go through the college football map, Harrison. Take us through what people need to do. What needs to happen for these teams to get in the college football playoff. Uh, let's look at the first top five or six teams, and then we'll uh, we'll call it a night. Alabama, it's simple. You win against Arkansas. Unless you lose by 50 in the SEC title game, you're in. So you get to the SEC title game unbeaten, Bama's in. Notre Dame, I think as long as you're – if you're competitive against Clemson, if you don't get blown out, 
I think it's going to be tough to leave them out. Obviously, the simpler scenario, just beat Clemson again. That mm -hmm. is their scenario. Clemson went out and they're in, losing the ACC title game, they're out. I don't think a two-loss Clemson team can get in, uh, especially if they lost again at full strength because Trevor Lawrence would be expected to play, obviously. Florida, it's simple. You went out and you're in. If you lose a game, you're done. I think if they beat the Crimson Tide with one loss mm -hmm. on the road to A&M by three points, you're not leaving an SEC champ out in that scenario. Kind of crazy thing about your top two teams. They control their own destiny, but also – they could lose a game and still make the playoff, most likely, both of them. And the reason we have Ohio State in the needs help category, James, is because they may not be able to play in the Big Ten title game. There's a lot of decisions that got to be made. The game against Michigan is canceled, which means they're below that six-game threshold uh, for the Big Ten's you know, rules for this COVID season. Will they change them? Perhaps. You cover the Big Ten closer than I do as host of the Michigan Football Report. There's been a lot of drama with Kevin Warren and that whole situation the past <laughs> four or five months. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. I think the Big Ten will come to its senses. They'll make some sort of change, uh, Change get Ohio State either a game this weekend to be eligible or they'll just change the rule and get them in the title game whether they play a game or not. That, has been our, that is our show today. I am James Yoder. This has been Harrison Graham. Make sure you subscribe. We will be back next Tuesday with our second to final college football playoff rankings.